recording. I like the overlays though. Okay, we're gonna stop. And then why does the phone not turn on? Oh, we're still going, aren't we? Yep, yeah. it's live. Yes, hmm, you know, this is. Hey everybody, it's me. I'm so sorry. Oh, and also I ended it and I was still kind of bitching about the technology is just crazy. I just, I can't have my phone vertically. I can't see what's going on. Uh, so trust me, I'm scoping out purchasing real cameras for this, but you'll just have to bear with me. I'm still trying to decide if anyone would even care to watch what I'm doing. So if you do care about this thank you and thank you again for bearing with me i think i'm just gonna stick with twitch as many people as follow me on youtube i just can't do it it's too much it's too overwhelming so anyway blah 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 you know wasted 15 minutes of my precious work day we're gonna get started if you didn't see the sad sad beginning that i was streaming before I hope you didn't because I'm going to erase it later. And we'll just pretend that this is a fresh new day that I just started. Hello, everybody. There must be like a practice channel, whatever. Um, so, But I did actually reach out to somebody because you can hire people to help you set up this streaming situation. I might spend some money and have someone just like tell me how to set it up. So hopefully in the next couple of week or so, we'll get it all ironed out. But today, you know, I'm going to backtrack. If you missed the first little bit, or because I'm going to delete that first little bit, um, well, good. So here's, remember this, here's the blue, blue, blue. Oh, good morning, good morning. Um, this one, we've. this is all from yesterday. I should probably move this stuff out of the way so we don't see, look what's happening already. So that's today's project. These were from yesterday. Remember this vivid, and I realized as I was, that we have a perfect complement of primary colors here and it was just completely random that it was red blue and yellow so we have i'm really this is so vivid this is a very vivid pendant i hope she loves it i'm going to be sending that out to her today we've got a lovely blue and these are always so sweet the the ruby red the lighting isn't the the best in here, but you can kind of see it looks pretty nice. So this was yesterday, and those will get packed up and shipped out today. Now we get to the hard stuff. Not the hard stuff, the challenging stuff. So we got a nice clean thing. We're going to start, I think, with our friend, the hummingbird. And we'll start by gathering the colors that we're going to be using for this project. So it's so much easier to see horizontally. Um, it's crazy. So I'm going to, I've got most of these colors washed. It's just a matter of, it's still kind of a bit from yesterday. I've got like, it's, it was all, it started out yesterday. Oh, good morning, Camille and Swedish cowgirl. I know I didn't say hi to you, but hello. And 
Yes, yeah, so I'm going to spend a moment and get pull the colors that we're going to be using. Uh, I know I'm going to be starting with Peacock. I'm going to be having a quick look right here. Peacock, where did you go? Here you are, Peacock. And I'm just going to take the lids off as I go because I know I'm just going to actually bring you over there. Put the, get a lid caught. We're gonna do this all this again. There's a cup for putting lids in. We need my water blue, L60. If you want, we can get the colors that correspond for that. And then we definitely need my N42 grass green. All the colors of all the colors of this sweet little guy. And what else? Chartreuse, oh, all my chartreuse crowns. Oh, I love these guys. We start with N37 chartreuse, one of my very favorite happy greens. And then we're doing two shades of chartreuse chrome here, 934. There we go, not much left in that. And I know there's another chartreuse floating around. Oh, here it is. Oh, look at this one. Let me scooch you over a little bit. Scooch you up. Good morning, Paulette. There we go. I think I just want to, these are very similar, 737. It's easy to kind of, but this one's a nice green. So that's very green. That's a little bit more green. This is a little bit more citron. So we got that one. We want our 546 Happy Blue, which we used yesterday. We've got you. You can hang out over there with the blues. You can do that. We're going to do, oh yeah, Aoki. Yes, yes. Aoki is a unicorn color. Very, very hard to get. I own just a couple of ounces. It is a hot pink fuchsia, and I think I actually when I was fooling around with the pinks yesterday, put it back on the pink board. I'll go get it in a moment, but I know it doesn't look like it, but it is the perfect fuchsia hot pink. So we're excited about that. We'll get your, your thing in a moment. Oh, a few little purples and blushy things for the tips of the wings. I'm gonna get you. Oh, and N5 is over there. We've got this lovely purple, two shades of purples for the tips of the wings. Where's the other purple? Oh, 737 chartreuse chrome. Is that the same? Oh, it's more of the same. Uh, don't need it. Don't, don't want it, don't need it. And, oh, there's our very pale purple. I want that. And then a pale blue is always good. Let's see. We're gonna put these up there. We're just getting the options. That's why we didn't do these yesterday because both of these pieces use a ton of colors and they're all ever so slightly different. So we're gonna be maneuvering colors a bit today. We've got that. We're going to be using, oh, we're gonna need a little bit of, we're gonna use a little bit of this kind of milky white. I need to get some of that 710. Is that 710? Is that what I decided? Yes. G710, got the drawer right here. Is it 710C? No, that's just 710. 710, here it is. That is white translucent, Nihon Shippo. It's gonna be a really kind of pretty milky, maybe, maybe for the tips of the wings. We'll decide if we're gonna do that in a moment. We don't have to wash it, so it doesn't matter. Oh yes, black, medium, and gray which we'll want a little bit for the eyeball. We've got, that's a really dark transparent black. You can kind of go over to the side. Pale gray, oh, you're gonna be for the run. Uh, pale blue, never, can never say no to another pale blue option. And what? Oh, I was gonna, I need some L12. I know it doesn't matter, but we're gonna do a quick 
L12 is a really pretty middle gray. So let me grab that right here. L12. Of course. Well, we'll get you in a second. I think we're good. For now, we're gonna get some water. And we're gonna get some of these colors ready to go and washed. There we go. There we go. We'll zoom in in a moment. So, but I am also, see that's the other thing. I don't mean to be blabbing too much about the process of streaming, but I'm really investigating purchasing a camera that actually attaches to my microscope so you can really see a close up view of what I'm doing. But then I have to switch to not doing anything on my phone and I'm gonna have to get some other cameras. Anyway, that's the whole, that's the plan I was telling my husband and he's like, sounds expensive. <laughs> and I'm like, well, mm, yes, probably. So water and paper towels. I'm not gonna do any spilling. I've already had a talk with myself this morning about not spilling water everywhere. So we're going to keep things, the things that wanna be dry are gonna stay dry today and the things that want to be wet will stay wet. We will contain the moisture prop in the proper fashion today. So, but speaking of that, let's go get some moisture. Here we go. A nice amount of nice clean water. And of course I have an, I, got, I buy these distilled, distilled water has been hard to come by lately. So whenever I see it at the grocery store, I buy it. So hopefully I've got enough for today. I've got a bunch in the back of my car. All right, so we have, I'm gonna scooch you out of the way just temporarily. We know we don't wanna scooch you a little bit. And I'm going to take a moment and do a clean, fresh wash. I found my good pipette. So we'll start in the upper and we'll just kind of work our way We'll just kind of work our way in this direction. So see how this is all dry? It's been pre-washed, but I want to freshen it up, make sure there's nothing wrong, nothing funky going on with these. So I do a little mini wash at the beginning of every day. So um, that's looking good. We don't need much of that. This is a really pretty pale purple. It's just, it almost just glows. But see how it's a little bit cloudy, this water? We don't want that cloudiness in our enamels. And see how there's like a fleck of blue floating in there? Let's see if we can get that to fall off. There we go. Yep, pour it right off. And we're not using much of this. But any kind of cloudiness really shows up in transparent enamels, really, really pale transparent enamels yes yes but um you know it's just like I've got I've got to get something that fits my microscope and I was looking at one today and it's like $550 and at the bottom I was like I think this is gonna work it says no refunds so I'm like do I trust that it's gonna be will it actually fit my thing will it will I be able to hook it up so I, I kind of I was gun shy about it. And I was like, you know, I'm not until I know, especially, can you believe no returns on an item? So I just, I have to, if it's gonna be unreturnable, I need to really make sure it's the right thing. So we've got that. And a lot of these colors we will be using at, in the Carolina run. So we won't have to wash quite as many when we get to that one. So. And here's this Aoki fuchsia. You can't tell that it's fuchsia because it's made from gold, gold. Such a pretty color. 
and these won't take much. We used this peacock yesterday, so it should be pretty fresh. There we go. And we're not going to rush today. I really, I really want to make sure. I mean, I want to get all the enamel colors laid into these, but I think that's pretty much going to be, I really want to take my time. I feel like I didn't take enough time yesterday. I feel like I was rushing a little bit yesterday, trying to perform a little bit for the camera. And I was thinking this morning, I just need to, you know, it's not about the performance. It's about the art, the art. So really, I mean, if you're interested in watching it, you just got to know it takes some time. And there's a little bit of like me staring at things and actually not talking. I know, it seems, it seems. And yeah, you saw me dribble a little bit of that water, but that's okay. There we go. This is a really sweet, perfect, perfect grass green. I mean, not, it's uncomplicated. There's some greens that have a story to tell, but this one, it's just a sweet, medium green let some of the other colors shine it really brings out other colors that's kind of its strength Ooh, oh don't want to contaminate my clean water all right we got this one that one i'm going to grab some of that medium gray and we'll wash that really fast and we gotta grab we'll do a little get a cup out for that white and then we'll be good to go and kiln is still off but we'll turn that on in a moment and probably need to wash a little bit more of this it seems like it's one of the main colors of this character Yeah, I'm super embarrassed about oh, going live and then fluffing it, flubbing it. Especially since I spent like an hour getting, oh, that's the one thing I did like about that um, app was I could do all those cute screens that pop up. I made a bunch of those and you just click on them. So I need to, that was kind of cool. All right, so we've got that. And I'm going to, you didn't see this water. I know I said the water is getting contained. That is an allow allowable amount. Now we're gonna do, this is a translucent white Nihon Shippo. Very, very pretty. Um, apparently I have a lot of it. That's three of four. <laughs> I like to know exactly. And of course, would I start with number one? No, I grab the first one that I see in the drawer. So, but at, you know, yeah, it'll be fine. We got that and I need to find my, I gotta see if I have my L12, perfect middle gray. And if not, we're gonna have to make a decision about a middle gray. All right, L12, 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 L12. Oh, yes. We got it. Here's some L12. This is just, a, this is a Nina Mia color. It's just a really pretty, let me grab the, while I'm there, I'll get the Aoki thing too. Here's our Not that important, but here's that Aoki hot pink that we're gonna use for the center. This is actually this color. So that's gonna be very exciting. We'll keep that over there. So we're, we've got L12 and this, we need two little cups here. And well, luckily this has been pre-sifted and we don't really need to sift the translucent because we don't want to lose. We'll start with the gray.
I don't need much. Maybe just, those are such the tiniest amount. That, that is plenty. All right, put you over there. I should probably label it, but I'm gonna live life on the edge and not label that one. And since it hasn't ever been washed, but it's been pre-sifted, look how clean it is already. So it won't take much. I am just about to do a revised video about how to wash your enamels. And that will be on my Vimeo channel. If you're interested in actual tutorials, definitely check it out. SandraMcEwen.com slash videos because you know i'm constantly revising how i do things and so i've done several videos about washing and it's not that it's not rocket science but you know i do things a little bit differently and yes i'm going to grab my sharpie and i know i said i wasn't going to label it but my brain would not allow me not to label it so i'm just going to mark l12 there we go like I wouldn't know, but this one I do need. This is because a lot of these white enamels look exactly the same. And so it's impossible. If you don't label it, you won't remember what it is. G710. Translucent white. There we go. And that will just be a moment. We're so close. And this one hasn't been sifted or anything, and you'll see how powdery it is. Well, that's actually not so powdery. There we go. That doesn't look like it's too much. Yeah. That will be plenty. I'm going to do, I say I'm not going to wash it, but I am going to do the tiniest little mini wash just to, you know, make sure there's no crud in it. And I need, I used almost all of my... See, it doesn't bother me that it's kind of a milky water because that's pretty much what the enamel is going to look like. So, but I just want to just, you know, wake it up. I feel like I'm just waking it up a little bit. So there we go. That's good. Let me grab some fresh water. Oh, good. I've got my distilled right here. Clean. Let's keep our eye on it. Our dirty water, dirty, dirty water can go over there. And... Now we are ready. Are we ready? To them, I can't put off the inevitable having to get to work moment. So here's our friend here. Now let me put the water to my right. And we're going to pick out, I'm going to put L12 up over there. And I'm going to put the, the white. The white and the gray can hang out because they're going to be towards the end. Here we go. I don't hate that. Definitely keeping these together just like that. There we go. Nice. Oh, I forgot to do this one. Let me just quickly get you. He's just going to be for the eyeball. There we go. nice you can hang out right there but let me look at the difference between the clean water and this is what i just cleaned off so you know washing your enamels is important so we've got this i've got this out of the way we don't need any of these other colors you can just scooch up there and i also have i've printed out Oh, look how huge that is. Um, that's the original. And so, obviously, I'm going to be, you know, I, I want it to be about this color scheme. But, you know, I like to be able to have a little bit of experimentation. But it has sold. That's what they bought. So we're going to try to get that piece exactly like that. So we've got this. Let's pull our... Let's get, oops, 
Yes, here's the here is what I'm looking through. So yes, it would be great. I think I can get something. I've got the light that's attached to it, and then like down here is where the the camera would attach. So that is the plan. Let's see if we can move you over. And let me. There's, there's where I'm looking. So there's where you want to be. There we go. Nice. Now, I am going to scooch everything over a hair. Boop. There we go. Now, I'm going to take a moment Hold it up and see if there's any wires sticking up that want to get reseated. I can see there's a little bit of nonsense going on. So I'm going to grab my tweezers and I just need to, sometimes they don't stick all the way down and if they're sticking straight up, I might accidentally grind through them. We don't want them to disappear. So. There we go. And this little guy will push. If anything needs to get pinched together, now's the time. I mean, there's not much adjustment you can do. These wires are just gently fired down. If they're totally in the wrong place, your best bet is to just get a pair of pliers pluck it off and make a new a new wire. But I don't think we'll need to do that for this. We're looking pretty good. Let me see what's going on with this tail. Oh yeah. This guy needs to get tucked in just like that. It's worth it. Sometimes it's hard to see the silver on the silver. All right. This one's just being a little, there we go. All right, that's good. Boop, boop, your eyeball. You know what, we're gonna start. Where should we start? We are going to, I'm gonna grab some yellow as well. Let us, you know what, let's start with the eyeball. No, <laughs> we'll start with the body, which we are going to start with. We basically have the green and then a little bit of that, let's just, Let's just get started. And the good news is until you fire it, um, hey, Ola, oil change. There's, that is, hello, welcome. Yeah, and like I say, let me just reiterate, when I'm looking through the microscope doing things, I can't read the chat. So if, if I, it feels like I'm ignoring you, um, I'm well, I might be technically, but I just am not, I'm gonna try to keep my eye on the chat as I lift my head up, but I need to pick out a good, brush how about this one looks good so and the good news is if we don't like it r rinse it off you don't put it in the kiln if you don't like the direction things are going so get you a little pinched These little 24 karat gold wires will be really cute. Now, let's do it. We will start with a little bit of this. We're gonna start at the tip of his head. Because we've got kind of the green. 
can move you out of the way. A little bit of water, it's a big piece. But you gotta start somewhere. So we've got a little bit of green. And you know, I know these are not that different, but they're very, very similar. Will you even be able to tell the difference? This one's a little bit more yellow. Just like that. And then we have we're going to do the peacock to the green to the peacock. Right straight through the center of the eye. And I don't want to blend it. I want it to be kind of a nice line. So let's grab our peacock. See, in the thing, you know what? I'm going to push that down a little bit. I'm looking at the photo. In the original, I had more dots here. So I'm going to scooch that transition down a little bit. Scooch these little bits of enamel down here. And I'm going to throw a little bit of a different shade of See, this is where we change because, you know, nothing's ever exactly the same. So I'm just going to use this slightly, and this is N37 Chartreuse Chrome. Just, just to kind of give it a little more. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit right here. There we go. That... That's what I want. Now, I'm going to put you there and there. Rearranging a little bit. There we go. Now, just like this. A little bit. like that and then it almost immediately goes into our green N42 here we go this little guy this will be more of a blend oh this is a good a good amount of water there there we go so we're just going to just gently blend those two colors like that and the green kind of continues and hugs this area here just like that and you kind of hug like that oh I don't I don't hate that at all that's always good Sweet, and now we're gonna do a blue peacock. I like how there's peacock blue and peacock green. But although we're not using the peacock green, we're just using the peacock blue, so we're gonna do this color. like that and you kind of hug
hug the back a little bit. There we go. Now this is, we'll have a little shadow here. And we're gonna do our little shadow with just a hair, just the barest amount of the green on the little belly here. And a little shadow of the green here. go. Now oh and just FYI I'm doing I'm teaching an individual workshop in my studio tomorrow and generally this, you know the students come from out of town and they generally they kind of pop by the day before just to I think they're just eyeballing making sure that this is legit. So if somebody knocks on the door I mean I'm not my studio is not technically open to the public but if I have to leave for a moment to talk to somebody that's because that will be my student who's coming tomorrow we are going she's doing a three-day individual workshop she's got a lot of things she wants to learn so it's going to be busy got this is good pick this up not sure where she's coming from though. There we go. And then a little bit down here as well. Just like that. I like to put a little shadow next to the wires just to give it a little bit of depth. There we go. Sweet. See how it kind of just gives this a nice round appearance and now our be beautiful which one is lighter than these they're so they're pretty much the same color what am i i'm just kidding myself this one is 737 we mark this as the darker so this will be the highlight a little bit more A little of this drop of water is going to help. There we go. Probably want a little bit slightly darker there, but we'll get that in the second one. this in put a little bit of that this darker there we go I think I like that better just a little bit more feathering just the first coat is really just kind of laying down where the colors are going and the finessing will happen in the next coat So it's 934 we decided it's technically the lighter of these yellows. I think it's uh, it's going to be a matter of too subtle. nice and even. It's a big area. There we go. That's good. It's kind of nice because I can do these, all these little areas completely separate from each other. and I don't have to worry too much about 
things going through. Now we're going to be doing this Aoki and I think I want to put before I put this color down, although this color isn't all that reactive to silver, I think I'm gonna put, I've got this right here. I'm gonna put just a coat of this really pale, pale purple down. It'll, it's not gonna bring much visually, but it will just be a little extra barrier. So we'll put this magenta color in, in the second firing. So I'm just going to put a gentle, dollop of this pale purple. I should probably do pale pink. Nah, pale purple will be fine. This will be just fine. Just in these little areas. An extra little barrier. Just not very much. I don't want to fill these all the way in. But, you know, just a little, a little bit of green in there that needs to get flicked out. That'll just be a shadow. Oxidation on the metal. Oh, um, sometimes pinks, pinks and reds, oranges, can be reactive to silver. Like they'll turn, they can kind of turn a pukey gray if the silver molecules bubble up or I don't know what they do in, in the kiln. So a little barrier to the silver is always good with these. And there's already a layer of clear enamel down, but it's a very, very thin layer. So I'm just, this is just an insurance policy. But, I, you know, there's not much depth, so I don't want to make it too thick, or else I won't have room to put my hot pink. That's good. And I'm going to clean out. There's a little bit of green in there. Let's just pull some of that moisture out. And get a moisture cup. There you go. Take a moment. Just like that. That should be good. All right, there we go. Nice. Now let's just go ahead and do this little eyeball while we're sitting here. Eyeball's gonna be mostly black. Let's just do this. And remember we put that little tiny dot, see our circle there of silver, which I'm glad to see it did not tip over. That's cute. And since I washed that pail, we can always go darker, remember. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this gray right there. That's good. And I can see, you know, I missed in the photo now I wonder if it matters. I switched out, I don't have this crossbar that I have here. I wonder if I should make a little wire and do that. Yes, let me grab a little piece of wire.
And it's just, it'll just take a moment. And how about something to wrap it around? I think this is gonna be round enough, probably something rounder. There we go. Let's just make a circle. Oh, probably you have seen my YouTube videos. You know, I do a little of everything. It's a hustle, it's a hustle. Got a nice circle there. Let's trim it. I just don't want it to tip over. So I'm gonna just cut it right there. I know that one go over there. Just I see where I want to trim it. Oh yeah, I have my eyeball on it. Oh, I lost it. Right. It's just a little shorter. That should be good. I think you're gonna tip over, probably. That's the trouble with these little short ones. That'll do. Now we're gonna get some enamel in there, which will hopefully hold that thing up. And he's got a little black beak, mostly. So we'll start. Oh, that's the wrong brush. This is the good brush. I'm not saying this wire is gonna tip over. I hope it doesn't. But I'm just going to kind of inlay the enamel just like that. I had originally made a piece that was kind of a T-shape. I just didn't like it. So I was like, Let's simplify it. There's that. And... A little bit right here, a little bit of shadow. There we go. Now a little bit of that, that L12, the magic of the L12. The trouble with gray enamels is it's really hard, they either are very green or they go towards blue to get a really neutral perfect kind of non tinted gray is challenging but this is a good one although probably a, a tinge on the green side but most of them go towards the kind of blue which i don't like there we go so, well, we might as well do your little feet while I'm sitting here, because those are also gray. We'll just get the gray out of the way. Start with this black, and we're just gonna put this, I don't even think there's any wires in these little feet, but that's fine. We're gonna start just up there. Hug the, the little tips with the dark. Same goes right here. There we go. And some. There we go. Yeah, enameling is kind of like, you know, pente. It's a moment to learn. You just start by getting a little bit of metal, copper, probably start with copper, 
melting some glass on it. I don't know if, I don't think they do enameling anymore in school. I remember making an enameled ashtrays in the 70s. So, <laughs> well, we did enameling in, I guess, it was just regular public school. It's nothing fancy, but I don't think they do it anymore. So now we're ready. Let's go ahead and do these wings. Yes. We'll start with the little wing. And I can see we're gonna start with a little bit of the green going into the blue. There we go. Yes, green into the blue. That's a little bit different than it was. Start here, get a little water. bit of that. Just like that. And I actually think I have a little extra. We're going to start with some of that blue. It's, I didn't do the wings quite the same as in the first one. So I have a little bit more. I, I feel like I like this one better. We'll start with a little bit of this blue. Here. Get some water. Well, the other thing I'm gonna say is if I get some cameras, it won't really matter because I will be streaming. I'll have my laptop, which will just be a lot easier to work with. I'll be able to kind of have more real estate visually, so it won't matter if I should be able to see everything that's going on. We've got a little bit of that. And this is going to go to the pale. We got a big transition here. So... You know, let's just, 734, I don't think we need you. You are excused, thank you. 737, just like that. So we're gonna go, it's a big transition in a very small space here. That's all right, we will do that. Bit of that, just like that. Let's get some of this. A little bit of that. A little bit of this. And then that last little dollop of green. There we go. And a little dollop right there. That's good. And then these are kind of have a nice pale purple. We're going into Alrighty Peacock. You don't wander off. Now we're gonna bring in these little delicate purples here. Whoop. You didn't see that was off camera. So it was a barely a spill. So we've got this, so we kind of alternate purple, blue, purple, blue for these. So we'll start with this middle reddish purple, just 
plug in there. And then here we're alternating and I can see I have way too much moisture. So purple, purple, and then year purple. It's a lot going on. And then we need our white. We're gonna pull our white. Well, maybe. Maybe we'll do the white in the next one. We'll see if we want the white. Yeah, we'll want the white. You know what I want? I think I'm gonna to switch to N209, the semi-opaque white. Yes. Got a little bit of that. Let me go grab that. It's a little bit, it'll be a little bit more poppy. It'll really show up a little bit better. I don't want milk toast white. Go for semi-opaque instead. That. So we're not going to use that color. You are thanked. Let's just see what's going on. There we go. Now. I really don't want to lose the edge here. If I put a clear here, it'll just kind of, you won't see the difference between the rim of the silver. It just will kind of visually disappear. So I think a little pop of the actual white will blend that into this pale purple will be a nice addition. We've got this. Do, do, do. And honestly, probably do purple there. Oh, purple is good. And then pale blue, just barest amount. A very light touch with this blue. Just to kind of make that corner sink visually. And then here. There. There we go. We're getting there. And then, yes, I think we're gonna do this warmer pale, N55, very pale blue. It's a gorgeous Nino Mia. Although there's so many blues. There's this. Did we decide we're gonna go white to the end? Well, yeah. Well, or we'll do white there. Yes. I know. White there. White here. And then the rest will be that pale blue. I know. All that for this tiny, tiny little area. 
All right, that's good. Now, I kind of, I'm glad I did that because that will kind of inform how this is going to be happening. And we're basically, there's no blue in here. Hmm, maybe, maybe there will be a touch of blue. Let's get started. I'm gonna do a touch of this peacock blue. Oh, you know what, we'll bring in, we haven't brought in our friend, the L60 water blue, because he's gonna be in this tail, so it'd be nice to have him in two places. He's very similar. So we'll just kind of start in this corner. I'm so glad that the leaf blower man is showing up outside. It's just not a beautiful fall day without a leaf blower. I guess that's what happens. You live in the world, you have to deal with the world. Uh, I daydream about a space that has complete soundproofing and I don't, I think I might very much enjoy perfect solitude. All right, there we got that. Now let's do And you know, there's no trees. Oh, whatever. Oh, I can see there's two of them. <laughs> there is a, an empty lot across the street. It's actually beautiful. I mean, there's a big orange cat that lives there in the summertime and they barely, it's a very untended lot, although they're there right now mowing it uh, and blowing it, probably because the city got on them about it, but it's, a beautiful view in the summertime. There's this big orange cat that lives in one of the houses right there, and this is his domain. And like he's huge, and he sits on the stump, and he scans his domain, and oh, he just has the best time. And there's butterflies. I just love this empty lot, and I know they have plans to build something on it, but it is. I love that. All right, so we have this dark green here. I'm going to put you all the way there and there we go. There's this and then we're going to go to this because I did change the design a little bit. I don't want to, I might backtrack and start at the end the tips and coming in and that might be a better way there we go so we'll do the tips first start with the purple because I think I added an extra feather row so let's find out starting with a little bit of the purple here That doesn't count as spilling. That was just an errant drop. That going into this lovely purple. Let's feather that. And then going into the white. And then that will be blue. In between here. And blue in between here. hate that. And I kind of like the little bit of blue. Here we go. Just kind of shaping that a little bit, which 
will be nice. So we're going to do purple on here. I told you today was going to be slow because I had to think about things. So. do a little bit of blue here. white on the tip. There we go. That's nice. And then this one's going to be, this one's going to be blue. Yes. bit like that and then this one's going to be blue while I'm thinking about it We're kind of alternating the blue and the purple that one and then this one will be blue you guys There you go. Getting closer so you can see I'm kind of pick, picking out what's happening here. And then this is just going to be a beautiful gradation from citron to the, the dark green. So let me get the white. Just like that. Good, good. And I swear, they must charge by the hour for those leaf blowers because there is not a tree on. I mean, there are no <laughs> leaves. He's like literally walking down the sidewalk, leaf blowing like one candy wrapper. One candy wrapper. I could just go pick it up put it in the garbage and his work would be done. So I'm salty today, definitely a little salty. There we go. Oh, I got a blurb. There we go. What, what is that? Hold on, I got is that going to oh, that's fine mm 
Let's just put a little extra of that white over there. Seems to be a little tiny dark spot. There we go. And then this is gonna be purple, and then we will move along. The rest of the wings will go really fast. We are totally, totally in the home stretch. are kind of a funny enamel color they tend to they can be a little flat they do I feel like they do better paired with other colors I've done pieces that are just solid purple and they tend to to go a little flat visually but if you segue them with something else they just do a little bit better And I love purple, you know, I'm not ragging on purple. They just don't have a, they don't stand as well just totally on their own. And when I do a whole purple, like a totally purple piece, I, I kind of mitigate that by using both a bluish purple and a reddish purple and using them almost as if they were a different color. And that gives it that, just that little bit of visual interest that keeps it, prevents it from being too flat color wise. Now you're going to just hang out like that. A little white in there. Boop, boop, don't. A little dollop of white on the tip. The tip. Just the tip. And then. Yeah, you're gonna be whatever. That's good. Now let me grab a little purple to put down here. A little purple there. Just in there is good. Oh, and I forgot that little bit of white on that tip there. There we go. That looks good. Now this is going to be start. It looks like I started with white. We could do that. A little tip of white. Here. Just on the tips. Ooh, interesting. Hmm, maybe, maybe. Now let's get our, going back to our citron. I'm gonna kind of work in this direction now. And these pieces, these larger pieces, they tend to dry out a little faster, so you have to keep adding water. There we go. A little bit of this. And then this darker green. Here. Just like that. Let's feather those colors together a little bit. like that. Good. And then this is also going to be that green citron. Let's make that happen. Just get you right in there. 
little bit of citron, chartreuse chrome. Oops. And where's my white? There you are, buddy. So there's that. This is going to go darker. Yes. Now we're going to start with, you know what? We're bringing our friend, this guy, back. I feel like we've done enough tips of white tipped, so we're going to just start with this real pale. Real pale guy, just like that. And this one, yeah. So that is that. This little bit of this darker. Just like that. And again, remind me to turn the kiln on when I'm just when I finish this area, I want to turn the kiln on. There we go. Now I'm going to get my green, dark, dark green, and pop this just a little bit. Just to make these feathers pop a little bit. Our chartreuse. Nice healthy dollop of that. Healthy dollop. These little guys, I feel I want to do a little bit more blue because there's a lot of green. So yes, we're going to go off the reservation a little bit. This is my peacock. hate that and then I want the dark blue to kind of get the dark brown we might pull out the darker version of this if you can handle adding another color but we're going to see how it looks we're going to get this fired see what needs to be punched up Just squeezing this little bit of the dark green in there yeah, yep, 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 yep. Now let me get my L60 dark water. Just a little bit like that. A little bit like that. A little bit like that. Don't hate that. And then... Having a thought about a friend named N58. Another dark water, but just a little bit lighter. 
we'll see. We can always green this out in the next one if we don't like it. But just, I like the idea of a little, there we go, a little blue right here. This feather's gonna be green. He's already told me that's what he wants to do. So we have kind of like an interesting kind of shimmery thing happening there. Let's see. Got that one more feather to do. You start right in the corner. And then what color are you? You know what, you're gonna be chartreuse crown. Just like that. There we go. That looks good. All right, that is, that's, we've just gotta do the tail now. And remember, we're gonna do his throat in the next one. So we're getting, I love this part. This is like, it's painful, but it's so satisfying. So satisfying. How much relief depth do you have between the different cells? Oh, um, I, I use 20 gauge fine silver sheet and 20 gauge is 0. 0.812 millimeters. And so that's the height. So 8.8, .8, we'll say 0. 0.8, sorry, 0. 0.8 millimeters in depth, which is just enough to get me, there's my base coat. It's five coats of enamel. It doesn't seem like you can fit five, but it's a lot. Um, these, this enamel really compresses down when it, it looks like it's right up at the top of the wires. It is not. So what we're gonna do is two coats of the color, and then the last two coats after that will be finessing that. So that is what that is. So we've got, this is good. This is gonna start with the blue here and then it'll be a moment's work, a moment. What is a moment? Although, you know, I had some, you know, I should have incorporated a little, I'm having a thought of this ultramarine also being right here. I know it's terrible. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna remove a little bit of this because I, I wanna do ultramarine down here, but I don't want it to, that's what I feel this guy needs over here. I'm gonna put some ultramarine. Don't be afraid to make some changes. I mean, I'm just gonna be subtle. This is gonna just, I'm gonna put a little bit of ultramarine here. I just, I knew I felt like I wanted something, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And you know what? It's ultramarine. I think it'll give it a little bit of vivacity. And this is a really pretty one. So there we go. Just a little bit. A little goes a long way with this stuff, this ultramarine. There we go. Put a little bit of water. Oh yeah, a millimeter would be fine. Uh, and no deeper than a millimeter because at some point, you know, there's a dance of how many times you can, you want to put them into the kiln and you don't want to do real thick layers of enamel because they'll get cloudy or they won't have a great, you know, things will happen if you go too thick with your layers. So at some point, there's no point in making it any deeper. You're just kind of wasting a lot of enamel. There we go. See how that has a little bit more of a oomph to it? That's what I was looking for. Now we're gonna start with that down here. That's where I wanted to go. There we go. These little guys. Oh, that was just a, an errant drop. There's no water on this tail, as you, I can tell. It's like a sand castle. There we go. See what's going on over here. There we go. I might have to fuss with these tail wires a little bit. Let me get some of this blue in. Once I get the enamel and I can kind of see what the wires are doing. Um, this 
sticking up. That's good. Now, let me have a little water down there. Not, not that whole amount of water. All right, now I can see what the wires are doing. So I'm just gonna spend one second. This wire is completely sticking up. So well. Oh, yes, you're fine. There we go. Now we're going to end on this blue. Put a dollop of blue here. There we go. And our lovely Peacock. There we go. Drop you right there. That's nice. And then these are just going to be green. Let me start here. A little green, a little green, a little green. That's good. White? No, there's no white there. There we go. Oh, we don't need that drop of water. Let me just drop that on the floor. There we go. That. That is the first coat. Let's have a quick look. Let's see. I'm gonna get, let me get my glasses on. Let's see what's going on. So we're gonna let this dry. Oh, hey, Vil Vilna, Vilina, Vilna. Welcome. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. So, you know, I was worried that maybe it's not that interesting, but I find it endlessly interesting, but I love making it. So we've got this, we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna go walk this over, put it on a trivet and let it dry under the heat lamp and I'm gonna turn the kiln on. So that's what's going to happen next. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. Next will be our friend, the Carolina Wren. Oof, she needs a whole first coat of something. There we go. So next on the agenda, we're gonna have, take a moment and let's 
keep. I'm gonna move this out of the way. We're gonna lift up a little bit, show what's going on. I'm gonna tidy up because we are, we have to do a whole second coat of enamel on that. So we don't wanna lose the storyline. We actually didn't use him for this, but all of these colors are in our friend, the hummingbird. And some of them will also be in our friend, the Carolina Wren, but we will see. Now the Carolina Wren has a lot going on. There's a whole slew of instructions I left for myself. We'll see if past Sandra made good instructions because I don't need that. We don't need that. So, and these can all just scooch out of the way for now. Nice clean work area. Doop, doop, doop. Now, here is where we're going. I printed it out. We've got, got my instructions and in the colors here. And I've got a photo of where we're going. That's the plan for this. So, We're gonna start with the body of the wren. And let's grab some colors that I know we need. And keep that just off. And I've done a lot. These colors, especially back here, are a little silver sensitive and some of these are silver sensitive. So in the first coat, we're not going to necessarily be doing the full complement of colors. We're probably gonna be putting down some barrier colors. That is the plan. So we've got some browns. Let me pull you. Browns, browns, honey. And I know I want some of these browns. And I'm gonna be using this platinum color that I even made a note. You know, goes yellow, choose another. But then I couldn't really find another one that I liked. So I'm just going to make sure I have a really good barrier under it. So, and I've never had trouble with platinum before. So I've washed some fresh. And we've got caramel. We definitely want our N5. This is a really dark red. Can you tell? <laughs> dark red. Got that. What else do we need? Platinum honey, caramel, dark gold, red, translucent white, G710. That's from earlier that we just washed. Did we? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. That's this. And yeah, the chrome green middle. Oh, I'll have to wash some of that because I think I dumped it out yesterday. That's fine. Peacock, Forget-Me-Not, Chartreuse, these are all colors that we've just used. N46 for the green dots in the background. We've got you over there. That's fine. And the second coat, aqua blue, medium aqua over blues. Yes. All right. We got this. We'll get started now. We'll start. I know, where should we start? You know, we'll start with the body. Start with the body. And let me just do that. We're gonna do a little quick washing. So, and you know, until I made all these orders, until I, well, people ordered things, my whole plan was to spend the last the last three weeks really just making making some things to sell in my store because I feel better if the thing that's for sale is the thing you're actually getting. Having to make something to order is a little bit more stressful because I want it to be honestly as nice or better but not it can't vary too much from the original. So there we go. We got some of these. It's just nicer to make what I want. And then I'm a lot more free to kind of explore different options when I'm doing it. So we've got that. Let's wash. This is a nice, the browns really deteriorate a lot faster than any other color. So I tend not to wash too much. That 
it's fine. Caramel is very pretty. This is not my favorite pie cut. Where did you go? There you go. There's. And you really have to do a lot of washing for these browns. I swear you can go to, you can leave for lunch and come back and they'll be cloudy, which we don't want. There we go, there we go. Honey, very sweet. Did we use, we didn't use much honey, but we will. We're using these oranges yesterday. Hopefully. And probably, you know what, let's get some more of this. I know I'm gonna use more than I have right there. N20, very pale yellow. Nino Mia. Nino Mia. I bet you're in the other drawer. I don't have any of the sifted, so we're going to see how powdery it is. Let me just double check. Orange, yellow, red. N20. Come on, buddy. No, no. N21. No. Fine. We're going to have to do a little wash on this. And because it's really powdery, I'm just going to set this aside really really fast it'll just take a moment but I'm gonna do what we're gonna do a classic Sandra wash it's like I'm a mixologist and I'm gonna wash I'm gonna wash a little bit of it Let me get a bucket, very important. Got a gross ass bucket. Boop, it's just gonna be right off screen. You don't wanna pour this stuff down your, don't pour this stuff down your drain. It will not end up well for anybody. So, that's how I wash it. Just give it a little, see how cloudy this water is? We're gonna do this a couple times. If it were sifted, I would just wash it in a little cup. But this is quicker. It uses a little bit more water. But when you're doing a lot of colors, honestly, it uses more water, but it's a lot quicker. So I'm basically going to just, this is called washing enamels. I am just doing rinsing this in water until the water is clear. We're taking off the little, they're called the fines, the baby bits and pieces which make your enamels cloudy. I'm not judging anyone's enamels on Facebook or Instagram, but I do see a lot of cloudiness and I think to myself, I bet you could wash your enamels a little bit more. So see how it's getting slightly less cloudy? So I'm gonna do this just maybe two more times. And you don't have to wash your enamels like this. I'm a bit of a, I know I'm a washing rebel. Everyone's like, Sandra washes her enamels in such a crazy fashion. But just pouring off the water. Pour a little last little bit. Oh, I'm gonna have to go to my car and get another. I think I have one more jug under there. That's good. See how the enamel's starting to be nice and clear? I'm gonna just do one more, but I gotta go grab the other jug. All right. I'm using distilled water for my washing. All right. 
that's looking. See how it's already starting to fall a little clearer? That is good. That's probably perfect. I'm gonna do one more. Honestly, I kinda always do one for a good measure. There we go. Because I don't want it to be cloudy. This is the most important part of this sweet little run is this chubby little belly that you can just kiss. So we don't want it to be cloudy. That would be the wrong kind of belly. But see how now, if we look at it, see how clear it is? That's what you want. All the enamels at the bottom, and this is all nice clear water. So yes, you don't have to wash all your enamels like this. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and dispose, this has been, this is old. I'm gonna get a fresh cup. And the 20, very pale, very pale gold. There we go. Now we have a nice, goodly amount. Get in there little bit. Boop. Now we are good to go. That should get us through. Did I find the platinum? Oh, here is. Is this platinum? Oh, that's my light platinum gray. Platinum can be gray or brown. Oh, platinum over here. Let's, here's the platinum. I was having a little trouble with this going a little bit too yellow, so hopefully it won't do that this time. I freshly washed it, so it should be good. Now we're ready. I fooled around, and this is N5. This is a beautiful shade of dark red. Can you believe it? Because it's made of gold. The enamel is colored with gold, so it turns a vivid red when it's fired. So you have to be careful because you could accidentally think you're putting white on and you're putting dark red. So when I'm not using that, I set it aside. Because I have had a student thinking they were putting a layer of clear over something. Nope, they were putting a layer of dark red over everything and it was a sad time. It was a sad time. <laughs> There we go, but that doesn't happen too often. Now, we're ready. I'm going to zoom on in. I'm gonna get this bucket out of the way. Let that bucket sit. Let all the sediment go to the bottom of the bucket and then I'll pour it into another bucket and then pour that down the drain and then wipe out any enamel residue. So let's see where we're gonna be here. Oh, and I clicky just clicked, letting me know that the kiln is ready. So in a moment, I might go ahead and fire our friend. There we go. Now I've got a few wires sticking up that I want to address before we go any farther. Push my push everything down, the little tail feather. And you can see how it's a little shinier here. I actually put an extra piece of foil right in here because I had a bit of a line I wanted to get rid of. So we're going to get a brush, make sure that's pushed down. And I say brush when I really mean toothpick. You just have to take a moment Make sure that foil is really pressed down. That is good. Hold both ends and I'm gonna see if I can just gently, there we go, push you down a little bit. That looks good. Make sure you're straight. You're all good. What's going on with your little beak? 
Your little beak sticking up a little bit. Oh, oh, there we go. This came out of that wire, just came out on my finger. Let's, that's good. It means we can just adjust it. That's good. There, that looks good. Everyone's good. What's up with your little feet? Let's make sure you are bent properly, right like that. There you go, buddy. Your foot. Let's open you this joint up a little bit. That looks good. Now, okay, now I'm ready. I'm going to start here. I'm going to spend one second and go and put the hummingbird into the kiln. I'll be right back. Then we'll get started, I promise. All right, I guess we can. I've got a lot of stuff in the way, so I'm just going to do it. Just going to do it. Kiln is set to 1430 Fahrenheit, 776 Celsius. There we go. Do that. Look at me multitasking. Probably not the best thing to do. So it is in the kiln. It's probably going to take about a minute or so. So I'm going to try not to forget about it. Don't let me forget about it. So with this, we're going to start, let's start right in the face area with our dark brown and our caramel. I think that will be good. I'm not forgetting the kiln. Not forgetting. And it's pretty dark brown right here. Not forgetting the kiln, it's at 1338. When it gets up to 1400, I will stand up and go pull it out of the kiln. And then we've got this little guy. Like that. Just like that. It is thirteen seventy eight. Are you are you stressed out? <laughs> I'm gonna forget you know. And then I won't look at the chat. Maybe like ten minutes later. Just gonna do this top up portion of his head. This is the honey, very, very pretty brown. It's kind of like a, I feel like this is more of a caramel color than honey, but we are at, oh, 14, 18. All right, I'm gonna go pull it out of the kiln-ish. Well, I mean, by the time I get there, it will be. There we go, cookie happened. Let's see, can, that looks like it's all melted. Yeah, look at how hot it is. Look at the weird colors it is. Look at that. It looks weird and gross, but it will cool down to the right color. I swear, did I just melt? Hopefully I didn't. Oh, I put it under my microscope, so you probably didn't actually see it. Microscope. So that is cooling. Now nothing is in the kiln and we don't have to stress out. And no, I never do that when I'm by myself in the studio. I always just go have like, I sit in front of the kiln and just veg out. There we go. So 
we're starting just on the top of the head. Just like that. Let's just get his eyeball in there while I'm in the mood. There we go. What kind of personality do you have there, my friend? There's that. And then, might as well get Oh, there's that loose wire. A little bit of that. And let's find our L12. Oh, let's go a little closer. the platinum I don't want it to go too do I want to just uh, what do I want to do we'll do the honey and then the platinum in the second one just in case we need that extra barrier we don't want to, I think it was going yellow because it didn't love the silver it was just being a bit reactive and fussy so I think I'm gonna do honey let's get you in here like that and just a little bit of this get you out of there there we go and then this is going to be dark again I might adjust that wire just a little bit to open up. I want a little bit more space. Ooh. Oh, there, there we go. Pulled the wire entirely off, but that's fine. Now, I want a little bit of darkness here. Just to kind of poke that eye out. A little bit here. That wire is loose, so I'm going to try to Just going to this caramel. That should be good to get it started. Now we're going to do a little bit of this honey going into the white honey. Just like that. Honey, 
and then the white will just go like that. And we're just gonna do these two colors to start with. Because I don't trust the platinum yet. So we'll get the platinum in the next one. Oh wait, that's, oh, did you see what I almost did? Oh, that's the N4 red, see? Oh, you little jerk face, do not. You live over there. See, that's why I never leave that over there. Where's my white? Crazy town. You almost saw what I did. That would have been, that would have been a really sad day. Probably would have ended. I would have had to stop recording to fix it. Here is the white. Trans transparent white that I want. Here is the vivid dark red. See my problem. So, whew, God, that I'm gonna like, I scared myself with that. So, red, red is over far on the far corner. If I want red, I have to go seek it. Oh, can you imagine? I mean, that's something I'm gonna tell my husband about. He will even understand. He's heard the story of the reds that start out as whites and he will understand. He's, he's never made a piece of enamel in his life, but he knows, he probably knows a lot more. <laughs> but on the other hand, I know a lot about C programming and I've never programmed a thing in my life because I hear all the stories. And I have just enough information to support him in his belief that C is so much better than C++, or at least it is this week. There we go, we're just gonna do that. There we go, just like that. Something to do with classes or something like that. Now we've got oh, a little bit of white down here. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. There we go. That's looking good. Now we're getting, see we already have a, his little face is looking very bird-like. Now I'm gonna, let's go see what's going on with Mr. Hummingbird. He might be cool. Are you cool, Mr. Hummingbird? Nice. Still a little hot. Oh, very sweet. A little light in the green. We're just refreshing. Here's our Mr. Hummingbird fresh out of the kiln. Let me look at him. I know it's a bit, oh, this is a good first coat. We definitely want to rich in this green up here. We'll get our vivid pink in the next one very a good start so I'm liking that but you're gonna just oh and we tipped over you see my wire we'll have to fix that that wire tipped over or we might just pull it out and go without so deal with that in a moment so next thing is let's go ahead and do his sweet sweet belly and he his sweet belly is this and this, and that's it. These two colors here, I think, and maybe, well, we'll do it in the second coat, we'll do a second thing. Can you believe I almost put that dark red, even after I told you all about it? Crazy. Let me put a little water here. Our sweet little guy. I love these little guys. They, each one has his own little personality. He's this one I can tell is stubborn. He's stubborn. Determined. He's very determined. His little face, he's looking up at that whatever and he's like, I'm gonna get that worm or whatever. Also, I don't know if you've ever seen or encountered a Carolina Wren. They're kind of jerks, but I love, <laughs> they're the jerks of the bird world, um, but I love them. I like animals that are kind of jerky. There we go. They have an opinion about everything. 
This is our lovely dark gold, my favorite gold. This color is in the top five of my favorite colors. Although I probably have 10 colors in my top five, but they're all just as important. But this is definitely one of them because there's just so few oranges that are just glorious like this one is. Get you down here. And what we want is a nice round, sweet little belly. A little bit more water, there we go. Capillary action is our friend. So I'm gonna do a little bit of darkness around this edge to hug it a little bit. There we go. Pull that, just like that. I got this little drop of water that wants to drop. There we go. Just like that. And we'll hug this. Just a little shadow under. Maybe even a little bit more. I like that. And now we're gonna do, this is N23. This is exactly the same shade of gold, but it's just a lighter version. So you know what? I bet I could put both of these. The whole N20 to 23, there's four, four shades, could very well be a single one of my top five colors because it's technically the same color. I just wanna wash it a little bit more. See how it was just a little bit weirdly cloudy? It's so important. This is such an important element. I'm just gonna take that extra moment. finish that's 12 we'll see the first coat always takes the longest second coat takes slightly less and then the third and the fourth coats take no time at all get a little bit of water Feathering. There we go. Now, look at that big belly. Next up, now we're getting into this tricky, 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 tricky part the wing area. And you can see, I'm going to show you the photo again. It has kind of a rich, there's this red, this is where that N4 is going, but I'm not going to put the N4 until the second coat. Um, because I want to get a layer of the brown down first and then the N4 is just going to punch it into a beautiful shade of reddish brown. Layering colors, that's how you get it. You, you can, you know, quadruple your color output if you just layer different colors on top of things. So we're going to start with that dark brown and the medium brown. I wish I do not have, I feel like I must want a different brown as well. But no, because we're gonna do the red, so. But you're not gonna see the red in this one. The red will happen in the next iteration. So we're gonna start with that. This is L42, seems really dark. L42, yes, it's, I wrote these notes myself, so. Have a little bit of dark. 
just like that. Sweet. Oh yeah, this will be dark up here, and that will be light. This will have a little bit of darkness right there. Let's get a little doll up there. Yes. Good. Now we're going to fill in with the caramel, knowing we're going to put the red on top. So, like that and we're just going to do a little a little bit of feathering I don't mind because we're going to have some interesting things happening so it doesn't have to be a perfect blend there we go it's a little bit more painterly there we go now we get to the fun part of our little bird which is all the shenanigans that are happening in our little friends wings stripes I guess stripes I don't know so I'm gonna start with the dark okay, so we need the dark we need our white not the opaque white we need our not the red and then caramel is a good thing so oh not that one well maybe a touch of this we'll see probably in the second so we're really going to focus on these colors. And I'm going to start by making the stripe. This is where you just, this is where the artistry, the true artistry happens. We're not blending, we're just placing the material exactly where we want it. I want a stripe right here. Start there. So, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to be making a butterfly. I got a buck. Someone ordered a buckeye butterfly. Buckeye butterfly. It has a huge spot. It's going to be very interesting to watch. So that's going to happen next week. The buckeye butterfly piece. I'm excited. I love making that one. That's challenging. <laughs> He's got that big eye spot in the middle of his wings so we'll have to deal with that just and if they get in the wrong place we can wick it out and just scooch the grain these are just grains of glass that i'm planting you know it's not paint you have to remember we're not painting we're laying individual grains of glass so if we need to adjust them we can just scooch Scooch them over, just like that. Oh, there we go. So we have one nice line there. And I'm going to put, I think I had orange. No, yeah, we'll do caramel. Yeah, you don't want to work too wet because you don't want this stuff to, you want to keep them, keep it where it needs to be. I want to put a little bit that's fine there we go Let me 
quick. Isn't it fun to see how it just emerges? It's so exciting. There we go. Little wick that moisture. Scooch this little grain of dark over, make a little space. And I'm gonna use my lighter honey. Here. I'll throw a little honey right there. Now we're gonna do honey right next. I need room to put a little dot right there we got this i'm going to put a dollop of the dark right there just like that We're good, we're good. That. 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 dark just like that just like that grab that caramel and do caramel tips. Caramel tips. Just, that'll be good. Get you all in there. see we've got let's see if we can are you gonna focus on that there we go now we're just gonna have to do the tail the feet the background we're getting in the the hard decisions are almost over so tail is also nice nice and stripy I don't have any in there. I've got just a plain piece. I think that'll be all right. Let me, honey. Just want to make sure. Oh, as I drop that, just put that anywhere. I don't want it to go yellow. I'm going to. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my stripes. Okay, we've got, let's just get you guys. What's happening? And my caramel. to get that's what I forgot to check very pale yellow I'm 
well, let me tell you what I'm thinking because I got some things happening in my brain. I've got this piece of foil that has zero enamel over it, so there's no barrier. And I'm not worried about this because that is just a dark brown. It's fine. I don't want it to go yellow, yellow. So I think I'm going to just put the tiniest dollop of clear flux over it. And I couldn't, I don't want to do yellow. So we're going to grab a touch of clear flux and not, sometimes the clear flux goes yellow too, but what about, oh no, no, I know what I'm going to do. One, 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 platinum, platinum. It's the palest, it's gossamer gray. Let me grab it. That's what I'm going to do. This is my favorite. This is also another color, but... Oh, yes, we're gonna use this. This is a magic, magic color. That's all I'm gonna say about it. It is pure, I call it unicorn, unicorn blush, because it is, It's. it almost looks clear, but it has just a silvery hue to it. Over you and it'll be a perfect base. I use it for a base all the time. I trust it. I trust it. And I'll just take a moment. I only need like a little bit. I'm gonna just make a micro amount. I can't believe I didn't think of that, obviously. Literally making that much. This is the magic sauce. And I've never been able to find this color. I found similar colors, but they've always been a little darker. So it must have just been that this particular badge was just gossamer light. Just mm, yum. I'm gonna get fresh water too. Might as well get the fresh water while we are thinking of it. And this will just take the mo oh, the work of a moment to wash because there's so little. There we go. Look at the barest amount, just enough to cover that. Beautiful. Now, I might as well go ahead and get the stripes in, and I'll just use this as the light color. It's problem solving. Okay, so doop, doop, doop. Dark, dark. I should double check. Yeah, that'd be fine. A little bit of dark here. I guess this counts as the first little stripe right here. Stripe, stripe. Stripe. Do the end, yeah. A little 
little too much water in here. That's all right then. Can we get in there? There we go. And then a little bit right at the tip. Get some in there. Honestly, we'll fill this, this one in. Now, we will use this tiny dollop. Gray. That will be a good barrier. So we'll fill that color in next. There we go. Now we're just gonna do the feet and then the background. We'll get the feet done just because those that's just a nice shade of gray. His feet are like, where are the feet? They're invisible. Let's, let's make those feet a reality. Oh, I got a dot of black right in, in the middle of his chest. Let me fix that. That's not what we want. There you go. That's good. Where's your little back claw? A little bit of water there. get this little guy. Here's your back claw. to do a little clean up here. And I want to adjust that wire a little bit. It's a bit collapsed inward. So this little foot, there we go. Pivot him up just a little bit. Make his foot a little bit bigger. There we go. Same thing goes for Just get this nice middle gray and color in color in the lines. open up that leg a little bit. It's a bit narrow. And just a little bit. There we go. That's good.
There, there we go. Real nice. Now, just going to wick that moisture out, and I'm just going to do tidy just around the edges because a little bit of that black creeped under. Um, it's not going to matter too much. There's a lot going on in the background, but you know, you want it to be just so. So I'm going to take a clean brush and just the area where I see that it creeped under, I'm just going to push it back under, brute force it back. You're not the background. You are the foot. There we go. There we go. Same thing goes right there. Perfect. So we have our little bird. Look how cute he is. Ready to go. And we're going to do the background next. Now, the background, let's get our browns out of the way for now has a few of these silver reactive blues and greens. So we're going to do kind of a little bit of a barrier thing. We're going to do our light and middle greens and then just do a nice layer of blue around the whole thing in the first go. So it's not gonna look exactly like this in the first layer. We're just going to get our base colors in. But we'll bring back a few of our old friends. Here we are. We don't need you. And well, these are fine. And then we want our friend you. Oh, it's such a pretty blue. Look at this lovely shade of blue. Wait. Wonder. Oh. Mm, that. Mm, mm. 546. Just. I'm gonna look in my blue. More blue. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yes. So we'll start with the center. It doesn't really matter. I'll probably start up here. Probably need some water. Nice drop of water right in there. You could fire this if you want it and then do it as a separate thing. I, I'm not going to do that. But if you remember from day, yesterday's curly cues, curly cues, you know, you got to get the enamel and all those little crevices. They take a little bit of time. So we're going to be here. We're gonna be here just a little bit of time. But I'm gonna do, do this in areas. So there's that. Now I said that, but then I, I'm gonna do it all at once at least to start off with. Get on in there. A little water. Saw that drip. And you know what? I want to dry off those feet. I don't want that block to to do any traveling.
this. is done. Good. Let's get a little bit of this green right in there. This green's gonna look a little flat until the second coat. I'm going to transition into the blue.
doesn't like that. We're getting there. Let's have a look. Hmm. A little bit more of this chartreuse. Good. A little bit more water. Feel like a little bit of green. Right there. There we go. That's a nice little circle of green. Whew. Now we gotta do the blues, but I'm just going to put a base coat. Look at my notes. Uh, medium aqua over the blues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, why is this so light? I know they're different. I'm gonna start. Yeah, I want it to be rich. I'm not gonna do baby, baby blue. Um, but I do wanna look at my warm blue. What's going on? Cool blue, 546. Mm. No, it's fine. We got this. We'll start with this. There we go, a little bit of water. This is a very pale blue-ish, I mean a medium blue. But we're gonna go ahead and put more of a 
a yellowish blue, sorry, a greenish blue, aqua blue. We are in the home stretch with this one. Is that a dot or is that a curly Q? That's a curly Q. Forget me not blue. sticking up there, buddy. I know. Let's push you down. There we go. Now you're coming done. Perfect. Let's see, one o'clock. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually get all the color on this today. Maybe that was a bit bit ambitious. These curly cues, they're deceptive. Good, that's good, that's good. Honestly, I'll just put you like that. Now we just need a dark L65 for the background.
Oh, so close, so close. Boop. Get some of that out of there. Now we just have to do a few polka dots. Nice. And that will be good. I'm going to do a pale blue. Yeah, we'll do the palest blue in the polka dots here and then the green out here. Whew. So it took a long. So we're just going to polka dots I think I got two more to do I'm going to put those on one dark one light just for fun there we go now I'm just gonna make sure I don't have any little air pockets in any of these dots we would not want that we go. Now we're going to let this dry. How long that does? It took like an hour. Whew, we're going to let this dry. I'm going to go put this by the kiln and we will get our second coat of our friend. Remember from it feels like two years ago, our friend, our sweet, sweet hummingbird is going to get a coat that will enrich in his color and he's going to take a little nap under the heat lamp. Yeah. All right, we're going to get this on. This will go so much faster. I'm feeling, feeling optimistic. I still have to get my whole studio set up for teaching a class tomorrow too. It's so much to do, so much to do. Well, I mean, I just have to tidy up. I keep things pretty neat, but you know, I like it to make sure that everything is tidy and nice. Alrighty, now let's start with our vivid hot pink. I think that would be a fun place to start. His throat is gonna be this lovely shade of magenta and this is an aoki color which is a discontinued japanese enamel which is their magical 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 and where did i put you aoki here you are and yes this is one of those ones that ends up firing a vivid pink but doesn't necessarily look a vivid pink so we'll just keep that there just as a reminder and let's just see, I'm gonna have a look. 
a little looky-loo under the microscope, see how we're doing. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot, it's been so long. That little guy tipped right over. So we can either redo him, I'm gonna have to pull him off. Let me get a pair of, see this? Of course, he's, he's really embedded himself in there. Good, good. I knew he was gonna tip over. I said it, didn't I say it? There we go, we'll pull you off. Yeah, yank you out. That was a bad idea. Badly done. I knew it, but I did it anyway. So let me, did I toss that piece of silver somewhere? Here's a piece of silver. Yeah, that'll do. Let's try that again, but with a bend so it doesn't tip over. We have one more go at it. One more go. Round you a little bit. I'm going to put a nice bend, just like that. Just like that, and we'll trim you right where my finger is. And it doesn't matter, I just, want him to have a little smile and we'll trim you a little bit shorter there we go that see it's not tipping over very important lesson that I apparently have not yet learned. We're running out of space in here too. See, this is why I never finish on time because I, I just want to do all the things. There we go. Oh, okay. you're gonna jam in there. We'll just set you in there. Deal with you. You know what? We're going to deal with you later. Ugh. Maybe you'll just have some shading in there. It'll be fine. Oh, oh, you know, I know what I could do. I have an idea. I'm going to do just a little piece of silver foil. Let's grab one. Because then it will just do its thing. It'll be subtle. Let's see if I can do this without. Maybe that first one will be better. Oh, that's cute. I think that'll work just fine. It will visually give something of interest in that otherwise dead area. There we go. And a little bit of water. And you know what? I'm just gonna leave, let you fire in place. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Let me see. 
Oh, I like that. See how it gives it just a little extra and then I'll put a pale gray over it. That's, that's correct. That is easier than a dumb piece of wire. Not that wire is dumb, but so let's thank the box of sparkly foils. Ooh, come on. I'm gonna focus. No, I guess not. It's very, that'll do. Now, now, now. Let's get this Aoki in there. Fooled around. Definitely need a little water. This is such a, it looks very pale. I have to really be careful not to get it where I don't want it to be. Be good. Looks like it'll be good. Now it's just a matter of kind of going over the same areas. And I definitely want a little bit richer shading in here. It's a little one note. So pink is going away for now. And We'll go ahead and grab our chrome here. Get you punched up. There. just I know it's like it's just a mess look at like it's just a pile of stuff over there <laughs> it's yeah this is how it gets it always gets a little crazy but notice my immediate area is clean and dust free that's important so we got that I'm gonna bring our So 
Oh, I got some green. <laughs> got a little green in my pink. I don't want that. Take a moment. Rick. And I'm going to pull all the enamel out of this little guy. Who knows what's green and what's pink. There we go. Now let's put a little bit of the pink back in. That'll do. Now, green, the dark green will continue. Just like that. And we've got a really pretty aquamarine. I kind of like the color of it as it is. I'm going to put this lighter one over it so it doesn't get darker. I want it to be a really vivid blue. And if I put another coat in, it might just be a little dark. There we go. Hold on, there's a fire and a fire truck coming. There's that. Now. like that and I want more of the dark green down here I feel like a nice soft I'm not even looking at this point I'm just going what is best for this piece not how will I perfectly match the other one because I would rather make a good piece than make a you know a poor replica of something else so each piece I, I like to think that I have some leeway to finesse it because there's always an element of the unknown with enamel. Sometimes things, they don't always end up exactly the same. So... This will go up over here. There we go. And then just a little vivid. We have a little. Back over here. There we go. And then this area will be. And then it won't. Be, it'll look a little bit more. Round, round. There we go. Nice. Where are we with the 430 again? 
nice. Let me put a little bit of gray in his little eyeball. And what is it just right here? No, we will just leave that be. We're not gonna mess with that. This is looking fine. These little claws look good. I don't want them to be just flat black. I want a little bit of shading. So you know what? I'm gonna throw some of this pale gray. It's a filler in here so it doesn't get any darker in there. That'll do. And now it's time for the wings. We won't have to do as many decisions because I think that I like how they turned out. So, hooray, good. We'll start in the same way. We'll do this little wing first. I am gonna punch up the blue a little bit right there, but other than that, I think it's good. We're just gonna do exactly what we did. There's our green. There's that. There's our peacock. There's chrome right on the tips. And these. There we go. And then our, remember we alternated our purple and our blue. Where did our purple go? It's been a while. Hello, purple. It's hanging out over there, being real good. A little bit of that dark purple. Get right on in there. good. This is another one where it's ground a little bit rough. Rough. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. A little bit of this. And straight up right there and it doesn't really matter but I'm going to switch to the translucent white don't ask me why I mean you can ask me why but it's obscure blue right here. That's good. 
is our baby blue. There we are. Baby blue can hang out over there. And a little dollop of the white. That wing will be done. See how much faster this one's going. Keep going with this. Let's get. We don't need that. We need. Well, maybe a touch. Where's our middle dark? We've got that. And a little bit of peacock. No. We are in the home stretch. We got about 30 more minutes. We'll probably finish this little guy up. Fire them both and see where we are. Didn't quite get as much as I wanted to get done today, but you know. I'm also I'm also second guessing this piece of foil here, so <laughs> we'll see. There's just so much going on. Punching up the shadows here. I'm going to throw a little shadow under here. Just like that. And maybe even right here too. There we go. That's, that's better. Now, what is next? Pretty chartreuse chrome. You know, I never do get tired of this. Yeah, I've been sitting here without a break. <laughs> That's the other thing. Oh! What's that? A little bit of this. You can hang out there. There he 
we go. Where's our chartreuse? Getting closer. A little bit of that. And chartreuse. white. Notice how much much less chit chatty I am right now after four hours. There we go. So boop boop boop. That's all the greens, now it's just the purples. Well, and then the tail, that's gonna be super exciting. We're gonna do, where's our dark purple? Here we are. Our pretty dark purple here. Do these one at a time. That's good. I liked how that blue looked under there. A little bit of blue. There. Going into the purple. That's nice. I like how that kind of frames the purple there. And maybe a little purple. This purple, these purple. A little, the grains are a little too big to fit into that tiny little bit. Alrighty, well, getting closer. Now a little pale blue. I don't want to go any darker on that feather. See, look at all the love and care that goes into each feather. Here we go, bunny. You're just going to be mostly pale blue going into that white. There we go. And we got our blue tip right there. Don't hate it. That's good. And now purple. 
purple, purple. I'll throw a little purple right in there. While I have the purple, get this. And also that pale purple. Purple, pale purple. That's good. Now we just have to do the little tail. I like how that kind of has a lot of kind of lyri lyricalness to it. So hopefully, let's just get this tail done. Tail is easy peasy. It's just blue to green, blue to green, blue to green. And then we'll be done with most of the color on this. So blue to green, I think is great. We don't want to go any darker, so we're going to switch to the forget-me-not. You just go on in there, forget-me-not. So, we, yeah, we, are, we have about 20 minutes left of this feed. And yes, just if you haven't been here, I'm going to be back on Sunday. Sunday after I've done my workshop and we will continue probably exactly where we leave off unless I have a little bit of time which I may not I tend to be a little bit tired after teaching a whole day so probably I think he's coming by to pick up the Carolina Wren on Tuesday that's gonna be a tight I wonder what time he's coming we got it, we got it, we'll finish it. I guess I could. There we go. I just, I can't work in the evenings. There, that's nice. And then a little bit of green. Bada boom. Bada boom. good. Now, I really should have put that other one in the kiln so it'd be ready to go, but we will in a moment. And have to actually decide about that. There we go. That's nice. So... We have all, I just have to decide if I want to keep that piece of foil. On there. Hmm. Yeah, we'll keep it, we'll keep it. Nope. Nope, we're gonna keep it. I like how it looks. I decided. So, yes. We're gonna fire this. I'm gonna go, well, this is gonna go. We're gonna go fire the Carolina Run, which is definitely dry. I'm gonna do a quick camera swap a ruski. Let's see, are you ready, everybody? 
There we go. Oops. Pivot. There we go. There's the kiln. There's Clicky. There we go. Nice. So I'm going to put the Carolina Wren in. We will chill out for a minute, honestly, and I will. This needs a couple more minutes before we fire it. But, and I need to find. ready to go in. We're just going to... Alright, you hang out under the light, buddy. Now, how do I feel about this? Not great. Now, dropped. This is a question I get. They're like, oh, Sandra, Oh no, my kiln drops to 1200 after I close the door. It's because all the heat got let out. That's totally normal. Just let it wait. I mean, you don't have to worry about it. Honestly, by the time it gets back up to 1430 or whatever you have it set for, 776 Celsius, it will be ready. Not guaranteed, but probably. Probably. So, I didn't do my hair today, so that's why I wasn't in the picture. So I'm staying, I'm staying off camera. Not that I do my hair. My doing my hair means finding my colorful headband. So we will just sit right there. Hold tight. We've got so many pieces to work on. I bet by the time this one is out and cool, that one will be ready to go in. We'll look at them. I promise you get to see them before I sign off for the day. So let's come back to the very messy. Look at our look at all the stuff we have to clean up. Look at this messy studio. Messy, messy studio. So yes, while that cools, we are going to talk about we're just about coming to the end of the stream. Thank you, gosh. I can't believe people have been watching this, but I hope you find it interesting. And yes, I will continue to do explore different options as far as cameras and whatnot goes to give you a better view. And I'll probably bite the bullet and buy that jewelry microscope camera over the weekend, see how long it takes. And maybe, nah, it will definitely not on Tuesday because I'm just gonna have to get work done. So, but let us take a moment and put some lids on while things cool. Let's get the water, the dirty waters out of the way. Say goodbye to the water. Yes. There we go. If there's any questions that anyone has. Oh, no, no. You don't want to over fire things. Um, I mean, there's so many schools of thought. You could probably get into an argument with a bunch of other enamel artists of whether it's better to do a hot kiln for a short amount of time or a lower kiln for a longer amount of time. Ultimately, 
the answer is kind of it depends. And I, uh, it depends what you're doing. I mean, obviously, if you're doing something like a, well, it really depends. I tend, I mean, once everything's melted, why are you leaving it in the kiln? There's literally no reason to leave something in the kiln once things are melted. So that's kind of the answer. Uh, but why not get it to melted as, as kind of in a good timely manner? You don't want to have it take three minutes to melt because uh, some colors will just blow out. They'll fade, they'll change, they'll be different. So, but that is honestly, it depends what kind of enamels you're using. Sometimes some enamels have, especially the French and the German enamels, tend to be harder. That's just honestly my experience based on the few that I have. They tend to be harder as in they have a higher melting temperature to start with. So you got to have a lot, a little, you got to crank up your temperature or do it for a little bit longer. So that's why I don't have a ton of them because you don't really want to do, I mean, I know all the enamels that I have in front of me really play well together. They mix well. There's not going to be cracking because they've got wildly different temperature things so yeah cook it till it looks good it's not rocket science so all right I bet, let's see how our friend is I bet she's still a lot hot so I'm not going to touch her but I bet I could set her right down let's see how she's looking oh and I'm going to put let me put this one in how are you doing are you dry you want to go in yeah okay all righty you go in This is just the first, the first coat. It's hard to kind of see. Is it going to focus on that? Maybe I'll put it down here. There we go. It's very shiny right now, but you can see we've got, we've got all the color blocking out for this guy. Let's see. Come on. I can't touch it. Is it hot? Is it hot? Yes. Still hot. So how do we make it focus on here? Here you go. Here you go. Here, that's what it's supposed to look like. It's gonna come. There we go. Well, there we go. Oh, this autofocus. I wonder if it looks better without the light. No. Things are shiny. We have to deal with it sometimes. Yeah, we'll let this cool. I've got, we're at 1362. I've got the hummingbird in. So we will see how it looks. Everything looks orange. There we go, there we go. It's hard to see what's going on. The first coat of color always looks a bit gloopy. It's not, nothing's really rich or it's, it's just the first, the base coat. So the second coat is really the magic, the magic coat. And what we'll do is we're going to introduce that, that red and those colors here that remember we put the, the clear color down if you were here like a hundred years ago when we did that. And we're going to really liven up this background with some rich aquas. We're really going to make this pop. So that's going to be what's happening with that. Oh, hold on. You didn't tell me I had something in the kiln. I mean, I knew. Let me get it. Hey, buddy. Sorry. There we go. Oh, but here. It's probably too hot. Here's how he looks coming out of the kiln. Look at that color. It looks brown. All right. Where did I put my things? Fine. 
he'll be just fine. He wasn't in there too much longer. Uh, he'll be just fine. He's going to cool, but he's stuck to the trivet right now. So I wonder if this is now cool enough. Let's do a little bit. Get off the trivet, buddy. There we go. So that is... We've got the back. We're going to have to deal. So it's coming along. Next coat's going to be the special coat. But... Maybe I'll do it this afternoon. Maybe I won't. Maybe we'll do it together on Sunday. So, oh, I heard it. Do you hear that click? I'm gonna get that. There we go. Now she's very hot, so I'm just gonna hold her up like that. Let's see if we can get by the light it is good. It's looking good. And if we go into the the regular. There we go. Oh, there. That's better. It's looking nice. The colors are looking good. We'll punch it up one more. I'm going to go put it back on the trivet since it's hot. This one might look better up here too. Oh yeah, I guess it's just a matter of the angle. So yes, there we have it. Didn't quite get as much done as I wanted and I will be back. Thank you for joining me. Uh, do follow me if you haven't. And because if once I become an affiliate, I'll be able to do, uh, they open up a bunch of things like different kinds of scheduling, uh, but you have to have like a certain number of followers and blah, blah, blah. So if you haven't followed me, I'd definitely appreciate it if you did. And yes, I will be back on Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So everyone have a wonderful time. And thank you so much for watching. It's been very much a good day. Have a good have a good evening. Wait, hold on. There we go. Oh, we'll figure it out. Never mind. Have a good night, everybody.